What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here, and Claude Dev seems to just be the AI extension GIF that just keeps on giving. We are continuously getting new updates from the founders, and this one is good. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so if you're not familiar with Claude Dev, I've done many different videos on this. I even did one maybe about a week or so ago about recent update but it seems like claude dev the claude dev founder may just be using claude dev to push out some of these updates and make some really big improvements to claude dev so it's slowly becoming one of my favorite ai pair programming extensions all right for those of you who've been watching this channel you'll know that i'm more of a fan of the ide as the backbone because it gives you a lot more customization in terms of features and integrations and just the dev experience overall that you really just can't get with just an extension just due to like it being within vs code and vs code's limitations just for extensions but it seems like claude dev is really pushing those limits with some of the cool features that i just aren't certain like frankly haven't been even expecting like we haven't seen a lot of these features from any other uh ai pair programming chrome extension or not a chrome extension vs code extension right so without ado let's dive right into what these updates actually are so two main ones with this new push out and i'll quickly touch on some of the old updates too that i covered in my last video that are really good but claude dev one okay so 1.8 uh came 8 o came out and you can basically now use at in the text area to add context similar to like you can with cursor so paste in a url for the extension to fetch and convert to markdown use uh useful when you want to give claude the latest doc so that's really cool and really interesting and we'll even test that out to see um you know that and it's great that a lot of these ai tools can you can you can just like upload the docs and whatnot personally i'm either waiting for or maybe i'll have to make it or something where you can just like scrape the docs all at once i think that would be pretty cool and upload it to the llm get it all the recent docs right away and imagine just having a ll or a pair programmer with a uh, really powerful llm with all your different docs for all your different tech stacks and then maybe a large context window i think that's where we're headed but anyways add workspace errors and warnings to claude to fix so that's really useful no more back and forth and debugging okay so you don't have to copy paste all the different workflow er workspace errors and warnings so it can read um, that and then add a files contents so you don't have to waste api requests approving read file plus type to search and then add a fi uh, folders files add a folders files all at once to speed up your workflow even more so this is really useful this is like these are all a lot of the stuffs that uh cursor can do um but it's good to see that claude dev is really uh pushing out these updates and definitely not someone to sleep on definitely not a tool to sleep on now claude dev can now use a browser so this is another update that he pushed out 1.90 and this adds a new inspect underscore site tool that lets him capture screenshots plus console logs of any url example local host giving him more autonomy to debu debugging web projects on his own. So we can quickly look at some of this example right here. I've got this to-do app and it's got some problems, but not anything the TypeScript language server can detect. There are runtime errors and visual errors. And now Claude Dev's gonna be able to help me fix them with his new inspect site tool. This lets him launch a headless browser in the background take a screenshot and capture any logs and errors. This gives them a lot more autonomy to fixing issues without you needing to handhold and copying and pasting the error logs yourself. So let's see this in action. I'm gonna ask him to run my app and fix issues. Okay, so now the local dev server is running in the background and Claude wants to inspect the website. So I'll hit approve. Cool, so it looks like nothing rendered in the screenshot and we've got some type errors here. So let's see if Claude can fix these. Okay, cool, so now the app is rendering, but it looks like there's an issue with this add to do button. So let's see if Claude can fix that. 
And just like that, the app is fixed. Thanks, Claude. So pretty cool. Um, as you can see, you can take screenshots of, you know, the website. And also, too, um, another cool thing, like these are things that at the moment, and I do think I pretty much know, like Composer and Cursor will get certain features like this, maybe even potentially better or whatever. It's, you know, it's the, it's the race right now. Everyone's coming up with new features and stuff. This is also new in terms of all these AI features and integrating it with IDEs and this and that. But these are some things that I, I continuously see with the Claude Dev development team which i don't know if there's if it's just the founder or whatever but um they're constantly kind of pushing the limits and adding cool new features that are a little bit different than a lot of the other tools so i like their innovative uh features for example cursor cannot screenshot right now it cannot automatically run commands within the terminal so the command terminal like running commands in the terminal i think that's really useful um to a certain degree obviously like you gotta make sure and watch it and make sure it's uh manage correctly but uh that's really cool so if you don't know how to install claw dev links will be down below as well as to those twitter threads too so you can check out the releases but go to claw dev uh, on visual studio code you can also type this in in visual studio code or you can add it to cursor like myself i like to keep it there anyways and then you just install it either there or what, whatnot um and yeah like i mentioned before you can see three days ago we got the this new version for the screenshots and the browser five days ago we got 1.8 all right and then last week when i did my other video we got 1.7 so he's just pushing out these new updates so let's go ahead and check some of these out ourselves so i got a project open here just a little dummy project and this is actually a project that we built in uh, one of our videos a few days ago basically just a simple little chrome extension right here that essentially scrapes youtube video transcripts and then we'll summarize them okay so we have just a chrome extension here and then we have a flask uh server right here that is for the api and our chrome extension will send requests to the flask server and then receive them back to get the transcripts and do the, the open ai um configure or the open ai summarization so let's go ahead and we're not going to use chat or composer we're actually going to use claude dev of course and you can even see the new updates mentioned right here, but we already covered those. So we're just going to exit this out. And next, uh, if you, I'll do a quick overview on Claude Dev. It can use different open AI or different API pro providers, Anthropic, Google Gemini, Google open AI, uh, Olama, which is nice. That's really nice when, uh, one of these tools supports local models. And then open router open router is a really good option just because you can pretty much use anything like you can use o1 preview o1 mini etc so just for time sake we're not going to use o1 um preview just because that's going to take super long we'll just use anthropic and we'll use claude sonnet 3.5 so it's a bit faster and another thing that i always mention that i really like about claude dev is that it actually tells you how much api tokens or credits that you're using or certain things so let's go ahead and basically just ask Claude dev right here okay so i got the whole prompt here which is here's a chrome extension i built that basically takes a youtube url and sends an api request to my flask server to get the transcript and then the server sends an open ai api key or api request to summarize it and send it back to my chrome extension I would like to keep the Chrome extension as is, but I would also like to create a new folder for a web-based app version that uses the same Flask server to send API requests to it, the, the app.py Flask server. I want to make the app a Next.js app, so read the code of my Chrome extension and walk me through step-by-step -step setting it up and writing the code and run the commands and create the folder all for me. Okay, so, and then I'm referencing StrideTube folder as well as the app.py. If you didn't see my video about making this Chrome extension, I'll leave it down below so you can check that out. But now we're actually kind of improving upon it and making a web app. Okay, so like I said, I really like how it can execute commands for us. This is something that Cursor Composer or Cursor can't do yet. So kudos to Claude for this. I really like this. Keep up the great work uh, at Claude Dev. Um, so we're NPXing, creating a new next app with the latest, and it's naming it StrideTube Web.
we're going to run that command as you can see we got the claude dev terminal open and it's executing really nice stuff so it's already basically seen that it's run that obviously we're going to use typescript eslint tailwind source app router sure okay and then it already so i apologize for the confusion it seems that the command to next.js didn't execute as expected okay let's try again with a more specific Da, 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 da. we'll create a no so we actually got it i'm gonna say it did work actually so that's the one thing is like the feedback loop from it running commands or like doing certain actions it's not 100 percent dialed in but that's also a little bit difficult and i some of these features like i said are going to be a little bit more difficult when it's not the backbone of the ide just because like it's relying on vs code um you know extensive extension capabilities essentially so i said it did work actually but like i mentioned before we can see tokens in tokens out cache uh we're doing prompt caching and then api costs so really nice stuff there and we're seeing diffs right here so really cool you can see apologizing for misunderstanding thank you for clarifying the next js app was successfully created let's proceed with setting up the web-based version okay so yeah we can see this has been created which is nice okay so it's going to create the main page let's do save okay so it looks like it's creating api inputs okay so it's creating some components so three components api input video input and then transcript summarizer sure i'm just gonna like completely run this on autopilot let claude dev handle this let's see how it works okay great we've successfully created these components now it wants to create the video okay so creating one by one that's cool the one thing is like it would be cool i don't know if it does this but to or it could just create all them at once so like if that was an option like how composer can do like i think if a, a really cracked a really powerful strategy would be if like you can merge the features between claude dev and uh cursor because claude dev like i said has some really cool unique things so if cursor added these or if you know claude dev you know, I think if Claude Dev could like, it was, it's a really big project to create an actual full-blown IDE, but I think that's really the route you eventually have to go if you really want to compete with some of these bigger players. Okay, so now it's done that. Now it's updating the page to render these. Use server, uh, use client director for server-side rendering. Is that within the page? Okay, whatever um and then adjust the layout to and style okay i'm just gonna click save like there's probably some issues here so, like if i was actually building this app certain things i would want to change but we're gonna go ahead and allow this okay now this is great you know it can run this command to cd into this and then npm run dev okay so seems like the run command so it actually did work again so it seems like it always messes up a little bit one so i'm going to allow this so it started on localhost okay so i think because i already have a project started on localhost 3000 i'm curious if we'll be able to pick it up and let's see so let's go ahead and check this out first of all okay so not bad i mean it's pretty like not you know visual so we have a hydration error i don't know if that's a i probably could fix this myself so let's see components client use client use client save save okay yeah that fixed it um so you can open the open a oh uh, enter the open ai key here and then enter the video url here so let's go ahead and test this i'm curious if this is going to work out of box one thing that we do have to do that it didn't mention is start up the flask server okay i'm just going to start the flask server myself so python app.py okay we got that running i'm going to go ahead and test Okay, so I like that it added the the password um, kind of like blocking out for this API key for me. We can save and it saved API key. Now let's grow, go to YouTube. Criteria that shows up in your gut. And so now we can... Okay, so I'm going to grab this clip from the All In podcast and we're going to paste this guy in here. So let me just make sure I got the full thing. So I'm copying the URL, pasting it in. And it looks like it automatically only puts in the... Uh, ID. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and summarize. Okay, great. So we got the transcript. Okay, wow. This worked right out of the box. So obviously, like, if I was to improve upon this app, um, yeah, I would obviously make 
Like I could basically customize a summary prompt for OpenAI or Claude or like customize it to send it to whatever uh, API tool I wanted and basically tell it like either give me a longer summary or, you know, dissect it or pull out 10 viral script ideas or like do whatever you want with this, right? But you see the power of, I mean, I guess AI in general, but I mean, even Claude Dev right here, did this in one shot. So Claude Dev is definitely... I know we all love cursor a lot of us love cursor but i think claude dev is one of the top uh chrome, like vs code extensions just because of its capabilities like this i'm gonna say so i said great please take a look at it on localhost 3001 and make the ui look more modern after you inspect it all right so now it's requesting to inspect it so there's a new feature we're going to accept it curious to see how this does right it's the first time i'm using it Okay, so it took a screenshot right here. So we literally have this screenshot that it took and it's saying, thank you for providing this. Uh, let's update the main page to create more modern layout. We're gonna save this. I mean, with all these advancements, like screenshotting, like, you know, being able to read the error logs, it's kind of just eliminating all the back and forth, like with the overarching like thing that us as developers really do. It's really mitigating those little things so i mean as we're going to see these feedback loops the feedback loop from it generating code to it being able to iterate upon it is getting shorter and shorter um it's kind of going to go get a little bit crazy i feel like so um cool we implemented this now it's going to edit some of these components i like how it shows the diffs like this all right similar to kind of almost like cursor it's not as good because you really just can't it as good unless you have the ide as the backbone because it's really hard for an extension to do actual stuff like within the editor interface vs code really doesn't uh, allow a lot of that stuff so i mean this would be in my opinion a lot better if you could have a setting where it um updates all these files at once but it's still good um i like how it has the option to do it one by one but i think it would be good if it integrated some of those features that we like with composer um, as well as also to, um, they, sh I mean, I don't know how hard this would be within the extension, but those checkpoints feature, that checkpoint feature that cursor just got is really awesome. I think if the Claude dev, uh, team could figure out how to do something like that, I think that's a crucial part. Okay. So now it's going to ins inspect it again while it's inspecting it itself. We can inspect it too. Okay. So already it's a lot nicer. Oh my God okay so this is really cool it actually embeds the video right here so it's not a perfect embed i could actually tell it to make the embed window a bit larger but i mean we could put a nice optimized logo right here you know change some of the this add authentication add a bunch of different you know features and it would be a pretty cool app like you know we have the web app now you saw my video we made the chrome extension we could integrate them to the real the really like you know uh, nicely together and uh pretty cool stuff we would obviously have more stuff than transcript and summary okay so it inspected it and it's basically saying okay we can see this has been really improved now it's actually offering to make even more improvements so adding a subtle animation to the title cool okay we're just gonna allow it to do all this enhance the video input field with an icon sure why not add a loading state when summarizing ha, this is actually getting sick I'm not going to lie, this feature needs to be added into Cursor because this, like, the, 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 it being able to have a feedback loop of itself of, like, the live, of the live deployment, you know, on localhost is pretty crazy. It's pretty powerful. You're saying make the video embed the same dimensions as a normal YouTube video. Okay, so this is the final pro, the final product right now. We got this kind of animation right here. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty modern. I mean, I would obviously put a logo here but uh we have the nice ui obviously I, if i wanted to i could tell it to do use some shad cn components um and then we just paste in the url here and it embeds automatically which is really nice and then obviously we could summarize and it's going to send that request hit the transcript get the summary and boom there we have it so all in all i think this these new Claude Dev features are super, super powerful. Once again, let me know what you guys think. Do you think the uh, Claude Dev has the potential to compete with Cursor or maybe some of these other tools? Do you think it is the best extension or do you think it is better than Cursor? Because I know a lot of you maybe even do like uh, Claude as the top one. I've seen some people say that. So 
I think it is very powerful. If so, if you are like an avid quad user, let me know what uh, some of the cool stuff you guys have built with it. What are some of the co cool stuff that you like with it? And why do you like it better than some of the other ones, right? I, I do like how the Fender is pu constantly pumping out new updates. I am excited to see what he has in store for the next month, two months. And, uh, and yeah, other than that, guys, if you got some value from this video, uh, we upload videos every day on AI, AI coding, business, marketing, sales, business growth, etc. A bunch of different stuff. So if you got some value and like this type of content, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. We're approaching that 7K subscribers mark. So thank you for all the recent support, guys. Really appreciate it. Really grateful. Other than that, guys, um, if you haven't already joined our free Discord channel and Facebook group, go to strivecommunity.com. Link for that will be down below so we can network with each other and share some value. I will see you in tomorrow's video, guys. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.